If you missed part 1, here's a recap. I'm going through games I missed in 2021 in a 3 part series. Part 1 was PlayStation games and part 2 is focused on the Switch, so let's get to it. First up we have Boomerang X, and it is one of the most unique shooters from 2021. You wake up with your character stranded on a mysterious island after your boat crashed. The first thing you will find is a glaive which is like a sharp three bladed boomerang. That seems simple enough, right? However, you will soon be engulfed in darkness as some ancient evil is being summoned to the island. It gets more wild from there, with new gameplay elements unlocking every so often including ways to slow down time and a teleportation technique. It's a slick package that runs well on the Switch and was a true surprise. It was great! Next we have Cathedral which is a metroidvania seemingly inspired by Shovel Knight as if it were made on a Game Boy. That last bit is because the main hero is a big chunky sprite which is how a lot of Game Boy games were designed. You will assume the role of a knight who is lost in a giant castle and the only goal set forth right away is to escape. You can slash at enemies or bounce on top of them. There is gold to collect to help beef this mighty knight up, weapons to acquire which can unlock new paths, and hearts to gain more health. It's a solid metroidvania loop that borrows from the best, but doesn't exceed any expectations. Moving on we have Everhood, and it's like an homage to an homage. Undertale was the love letter to Super Mario RPG and Earthbound. Everhood is like a love letter to Undertale, but also those two other games. If you didn't know any better, they may think this game is a secret sequel to Undertale based on character and world design alone. It is essentially a series of bosses strung together with a few puzzles in between. There is no way to attack enemies, instead all you have to do is dodge attacks to the beat of the music. Everhood is also a rhythm game. A lot is going on here if that wasn't uh, evident enough, and nothing unfortunately ever felt like it was thoroughly thought through. To put it another way, it lacks the flair of Undertale and instead feels like a okay shell of a concept without much filling inside. To Everhood's credit, the bosses and music are good even if they are unbalanced. Let's move on to The Legend of Tien Ding, which is an action platformer set in the early 1900s. You play as the titular rogue Tien Ding, who has been likened to Robin Hood except, you know, Asian. He helps the poor and oppressed societies. You get the idea. Your moveset from the start is massive, which made exploration and combat fun from the get-go. You can pummel enemies with your knife, or use your scarf to both stun enemies and steal their weapons. These weapons can range from guns to staffs to Molotov cocktails. The comic book aesthetic is also a nice touch. The pacing is a bit uneven, and the story is a bit cliché, but it was a fun journey nonetheless. Super Mambo Quest is like Super Meat Boy as if it were a Metroidvania. It's a colorful platformer with goofy looking purple monster as the hero who has their tongue sticking out. This tongue can help you bounce off a wall, so it's not just for show. The game is divided up into small rooms, each with a certain amount of crystals and coins to collect. Grab enough and the next area will unlock. These rooms are open ended with you not asked to do every single one. The controls are super tight and it looks great too. However, the experimental combo doesn't fit together perfectly. The need to collect items to move on defeats the momentum of just wanting to perfectly dash around levels. Finally we have Unmetal which is a parody stealth game that is trying to pay homage to Metal Gear. With any sort of parody game, movie or whatever, the jokes need to be funny, otherwise the whole idea falls apart. And while I did chuckle a few times, most of the jokes fell flat. It was a bit too tryhard poking fun at various obvious tropes, but not figuring out a good way to be clever with them. The gameplay is much better. It falls in line with the NES games with a few modern twists. You can distract enemies with coins before knocking them out, for example. The one new addition I liked was the leveling up system. Punch enemies, game perks that carry through. Simple, but good. And that's it! So, we covered PlayStation, we covered Switch. What will the last video be? I wonder. Well, join me to find out. Did you like that video? If you did, please like, subscribe, and spread the good word of Reaction Examiner. If you want to read more of my stuff, you can find a plethora of my articles over at The Gamer and Game Rant. All of those links and more are in the show notes below. Thanks for watching!